どこだろう There's an argument to be made that Cure by Kiyoshi Kurosawa is the greatest movie ever made. When we think of the word cure, at least in a medical context, a symbol that is synonymous to healing one's ailments and health crises is the medical cross. And in a spiritual context, if you extend the limb of this cross, you get the Christian cross, a symbol of religion which provokes images of a more existential cure to human suffering. We all know that these pillars of society form the center of its operating mechanism. But Kiyoshi Kurosawa's society in Cure seems to be secretly governed by a different cross altogether. The cynical tilt of this film towards crime and destruction gives rise to a creepy world of occultist cures, as if the film is peering into the mind of a wild monkey. In Cure, Kiyoshi Kurosawa's camera is marked by an iconic shift away from the center, away from our protagonist onto miscellaneous elements of modern Japan that appear empty. In fact, the film begins on a very atypical note, holding a gaze not on Detective Takabe, who is our protagonist solving murders, but his wife, a mentally disturbed woman who narrates a cryptic fable before us, with the camera cutting to her diagnosis of schizophrenia. On the surface, Cure is about a detective and a psychiatrist decrypting puzzling murders happening in the city. The twist is that all the murders were committed by a hypnotist who claims to have lost his memory. Eventually, Detective Takabe discovers the hypnotist's origins as a psychology student obsessed with mesmerism and animal magnetism. But by the end, we realize that while Takabe was hunting Mamiya, it was actually Mamiya who preyed on Takabe's mind all along, turning this murder mystery into an unlikely arthouse tragedy with surprising psychological depth. This is how elements of this world contradict themselves in subtle ways, giving us this bizarre feeling that the film is alive in more ways than one. While most film analysts on the internet assume that these elements are literal, in this series I seek to adopt an alternative approach that changes the stakes of the film completely. At one point in Kiyoshi Kurosawa's Cure, when we are on the terrace of a building and Detective Takabe talks about criminal psychology with Sakuma, he says this very revealing line about how he perceives his work. It is fascinating to see that both the detective and the psychiatrist constantly ask themselves if there are any novels or films to explain the perp's crimes. This not only sets the film in a satirically postmodern context, but also reveals the grave obsession with language this world carries, an obsession that in many instances goes beyond the reality of the act of murder itself. It is no wonder that the film dehumanizes the opening crime scene by adding ironic music to it, but becomes very real and intense when the detective has a conversation with Mamiya inside his cell. As psychoanalyst Jack Lacan states, language is a structure of the unconscious. And it's almost as if the characters in the film are drawn more to this unconscious rather than the conscious, more to the symbol of X carved onto the necks of the victims rather than the common act of murder itself. So the actual world of the film has this sense of creepy emptiness and dysfunction in it. When we look at the detective's own house, its silent movements are filled with the drone sound of a running washer dryer. 
which reveals itself empty when Takabe opens the lid. While the detective's conversations with his wife show us an endearing sense of care and concern he has for her, when the talking between them stops, he is reminded of the mental condition of his wife and the dark reality of their situation. This dynamic builds up to this extremely paradoxical moment in the film, when the two are clearly on their way to the mental asylum, but his wife asks him details about their vacation spot. This is the moment that drives home the dichotomy between language and reality that we hinted towards in the intro video of the series. The wife stands for the dark, empty, mundane reality of Japanese life, while the detective stands for this desperate attempt by language to hide and repress this very reality. What is said by the characters often very clearly contradicts what is being shown by the visuals of the film. Language is often just a tool of deception in this story, going hand in hand with the very concept of hypnosis that makes itself evident as the story progresses. As hinted by its opening scene, a lot of the dialogue in Kiyoshi Kurosawa's cure plays out like a psychiatric meeting between a patient and a shrink, and in extension, there are two clearly obvious shrinks in this film. The first one, Fumie's shrink, can be seen making a complicated diagnosis of her within his clinic. But as the story evolves, Fumie only devolves as her condition grows worse, ultimately leading her to be hospitalized under the direct care of the psychiatrist who hints towards the impotence of psychiatry in healing the deep-seated mental problems the shrink is unable to decrypt. The second psychiatrist, Sakuma, is in more direct touch with the story, but he merely confirms this impotence as he opines on the murdering perps in the film. Firstly, the key assumption that he goes by to make this bold claim is that these men maintained a detached calm despite the fact that they've murdered a person and therefore they're still sane. But can we really blindly fall for his assumptions when reality tells us otherwise? <laughs> In an exchange that Mamiya has with Dr. Akiko, he reveals that the doctor herself had repressed feelings and a desire to kill men and so Mamiya merely nudges the doctor to express these feelings in destructive ways. Another case that invalidates Sakuma's assumptions is the one with the police officer killing his peer. He nonchalantly confesses to the murder later and even goes on to explain that his act was out of feelings of hatred towards his victim. This goes on to imply that the perps were clearly not as rational as they seemed to Sakuma and a darker mental illness loomed inside them which the shrink clearly couldn't make sense of. So why does the film show us such a clear failure of the shrink in understanding these people? Psychiatry's entire appeal is to be able to uncover the deep parts of a subject's mind by means of conversation. It assumes that by analyzing the language of the subject, the psychiatrist can detect trauma and psychosis through its patterns. But what about a society in which people really don't talk about themselves? Even when asked who are you, they tend to only define themselves strictly by their social status. While in language they might appear perfectly rational, in reality they turn out to be just the opposite. A second claim that Sakuma makes is about hypnosis. <laughs> Sakuma's 
その人間の基本的な倫理観は変えることはできないつまり殺人を悪だと思っている人間に人を殺せというテーマは暗示できないよ Thanks to his confidence about the sanity of the perps, Sakuma assumes that these people have an intact sense of morality which should rule out hypnosis. Thanks to placing so much weight on kindness and social conduct, the culture of Japan at times has an overwhelming sense of confidence in their general sense of morality. When they look at their doctors or policemen or even detectives, trust in them is taken for granted. But the monkey mind itself betrays these assumptions when all these so-called pillars of society reveal their hidden feelings. While Sakuma relies so heavily on the external sanitized persona of Japanese people to make the case for their sanity, the film's dichotomy between the empty internal and shallow external directly contradicts his words. Cure shows us a world where psychiatry, the center of what is considered to be the healing process of a person's mental health, loses its potency in a paradoxical society. To me, this is why Kiyoshi's camera shifts to the periphery, to the flashing signs and symbols of the environment that signal a tendency towards the occult. <laughs> マミさんなんか事件に関わってるさそれを調べるために中見たいんですああなるほどじゃああとよろしく In Kiyoshi Kurosawa's Cure, when Takabe locates Mamiya's house, he discovers several books lying around, including those by Carl Gustav Jung. When reading the film, it seems to me that most people focus more on Mesmer, just because Takabe and Sakuma take that up to understand Mamiya later. But it is Jung that to me bears a deeper resemblance to the world that Kurosawa has built. Jung was a psychoanalyst known for constructing an independent map of the human mind based on dream analysis and religious mythology. While his contemporary Freud formed a more scientific center of psychoanalysis, Carl had a sharply different path, especially towards the latter stages of his career. Instead of treading the conventional path of psychotherapy, Jung got fascinated by the rabbit hole of the occult, an investigation that ultimately led him down an obsessive path into man's darkest symbols and rituals, seemingly perishing with his demise. In some sad ways, to me this reflects Takabe's own pursuits, who is consistently warned by the conventional psychiatrist not to pursue Mamiya. a path that leads him into the greatest darkness within while everybody ponders over the meaning of mamiya shoulder burns a jungian interpretation gives us a clear connection towards the archetype of the wounded healer a being who gets hurt by a dangerous encounter with death and as a result uses the deep spiritual experience to heal others of course the only key difference to the use of the term here is that the idea of healing is now ironic Mamiya plays the ultimate act of deception by appearing like a miracle healer who understands people beyond what language conveys possibly because he himself is not stuck in names or social statuses. この人はどうです？知らない。これはあなたですよ。He's like a monkey without identity. 似てる。これで一つ確かなことが分かりました。それはあなたです。いいですね。知らない男だ。In these ways, he is a polar opposite of Takabe. He identifies strictly with the burden of the shadow the Japanese people carry within themselves. So where Sakuma's psychoanalysis of the perps fails, Mamiya's silent hypnosis seems to have a strong influence in the murders. In the first case where Mamiya appears to be an amnesiac with no sense of identity is taken by a stranger Toru to his house who asks him questions about who he is deflecting these questions Mamiya plays out a seemingly random set of acts involving dropping oranges to the ground turning the light off and redirecting questions about his identity back to the other person finally flashing his lighter to hypnotize him in the second case mamiya is taken into custody by two inspectors one of whom is able to trick by simply flashing this lighter again and convincing the man into killing his peer in the next case mamiya adopts a different technique altogether with the doctor 
of showing water falling instead of fire rising from a lighter. But when the groundwork is laid, when Mamiya makes her confess her dark feelings about men, the hypnotic suggestion successfully kicks in. The word confession is key here. Because it seems to me that Mamiya often takes the place of not only the psychiatrist but also the priest who makes himself willing to hear these people talk about their dark feelings, something that a shrink or a priest is clearly unable to tap into. And if I try to interpret a pattern in these cases, because the police officer more consciously hated his peer, Mamiya didn't have to work too hard to hypnotize him. Even the detective's flashing cues seemed to have an effect on his vulnerable mind. On the other hand, Toru Hanaoka bore a much deeper resentment towards his wife, probably deeper than his own understanding of himself. And so it took much longer for Mamiya to trap him. What Sakuma claims could be the result of the genius of the hypnotist seems to be dependent rather on the vulnerability of the mind of the victim himself. So when it is revealed that Detective Takabe is also getting visions of his wife dying, we can interpret his rage as a fight against Mamiya's methods. And whether he succeeds or not turns out to be the real climax of this film. This climactic peak of Kyoshi Kurosawa's cure is a dramatic moment that brings home a realization that the film is probably operating like a mirror. All parts of Mamiya's hypnotic process, the falling objects, dark rooms, and flashing lights appear in Takabe's own pursuits of him, sometimes in ways ironically instigated by Takabe. Even the entire idea of killing one's wife or an officer killing his contemporary seems to reflect the darker world of feelings inside Takabe. This opens up a frightening theory for us. Is Mamiya nothing but a reminder to Takabe of his own repressed thoughts? Is Mamiya merely flipping the entire premise of psychiatry by committing murders that remind the detective of his reality? Another key moment that foreshadows this theory is when Mamiya asks the detective why he keeps such grotesque photos of the crimes with him. As if trying to imply that the detective likes to keep such photos, that his unconscious mind is attracted to this destruction. Although Takabe at first appears to be this polar opposite to Mamiya, at the same time, the camera hints in subtle ways towards what Carl Jung calls the union of opposites. To me, this very idea makes the film transcend even the pop culture dynamic of a Batman and a Joker. In hindsight, I find it fascinating that their quotes were eerily similar to each other and there really seems to be a transference that slowly and steadily takes place between the two. In a key scene of the two characters that follows this one, we cut to an over-the-shoulder shot that unites the two together, giving us a feeling that deep down, they're finally meeting on the same page. Eventually, Mamiya even reveals that Takabe is the person responsible to free him from his cell. This goes on until we see a key moment where Takabe seems to take the place of Mamiya, and that too in Sakuma's mind. Although the psychiatrist verbally says that it is Mamiya who is carrying out the ritual of Mesmer, in his head, we get to see a different culprit altogether, who seems to pursue him and drive Sakuma to suicide. So is it possible that in a psychoanalytic search for words to explain the crimes, Takabe realizes that he is turning into a Mamiya himself? In the dichotomy between language and reality, it's as if Takabe's language dies in the film and Mamiya's hypnotic silence strengthens as time passes. 
Thanks to this low psychological defeat in Takabe, the repressed thoughts about his wife only increase in his mind. Once again, the periphery comes to haunt a man who is trying to solve crimes, making Takabe forget his persona so that he starts accepting Mamiya slowly and steadily. Therefore, my reading of the final scene is very interpretive. In the asylum, Takabe realizes that he has revealed himself to be so much like Mamiya that Mamiya is not needed anymore. He has given in to the idea of becoming a vessel for a killing rampage that can now even go beyond hypnotic suggestion. The effortlessness with which his interaction with the waitress nudges her to pick up a knife in the final shot of the film opens up the idea that society as a whole is now ready to act on its repressed desires. The ex has possessed the spirit and probably even replaced religion now as if the murderous act becomes the act of confession. Speaking of knives, I made another essay on Kyoshi Kurosawa's Chime, where a chef's knife turns into a murder weapon within yet another one of his cryptic horrors. So check it out now.